Welcome to Archaeology Day at Cahokia Mounds World Heritage Site. Let's see what's going on. Archaeological Society. Terry Norris, a uh, member of the Cahokia Mounds Museum Society board. Uh, we're raising money for the site. You know, we sponsor events like this today. But me personally, the reason I'm, I'm involved in this is that uh, a portion of the money that we raise goes to the purchase of land that's outside of the state park boundaries. About half of the site is outside the boundaries, and over the last 10 years, we as a corporate board have been able to uh, purchase portions of seven temple mounds and 50 other tracks of ground that immediately become part of the state park and are therefore preserved. So and they're just eating. That's, uh, that's what we're do right doing today. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, we're just a little right. Thank you. Thank you. Across the door, yeah. But yeah, Lori's is back there. Thank you. I, I got to take care of the situation with the power cords. These are all artifacts or replicas of artifacts that we found. These stars like this, those are the stars. Yeah, you're welcome to come up with the We're live streaming for the Kentucky Archaeological Society, and we were wondering if you could tell us about it. Okay, so do you want him to do it? What am I going to do? Live stream. A what? A live stream. Live stream? I don't know. What do you want me to say? Tell us a little bit about what you're doing here today. What we're doing here today is we're with the uh, Center for American Archaeology. We're an uh, independent research, education, and uh, awareness organization. You know, folks and I have had archaeology. We've been an uh, organization since 1953. We're located in Camps Hill, Illinois, where we have a uh, archaeological museum. We do programs in the fall and spring and winter for school groups, scouts, uh, and similar organizations, whether it's on campus or um, on their campuses. And during the summer, we do archaeological field work. Uh, we have an active research program, and we have opportunities for high school and older to come and join us on uh, our field group. And we're, I say again, we're an independent nonprofit, and we survive on tuitions and donations. We're always looking for more donors. <laughs> and members. <laughs> Thank you. We know somebody else who got her start at Campsville when I, she was six. I yeah. started at Campsville Very when cool. I was six. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. What did you do? Did you come visit? Come day? Uh, or what you do? I worked at the Gardens of Campsville. Nice! Oh, you yeah, the Gardens of Campsville. Awesome. Whoa. Who did you come out with? Mary. Mary? <laughs> Mary Perkle. Right on. Yeah, yeah, Mary was... Give Mary Perkle a shout out. <laughs> Mary Perkle was our education director from 2001 until 12, maybe. She's still in the area, she, and we see her from time to time. So tell us about some of the things you brought with you today. These are um, 
objects, sort of uh, objects that you might find in the archaeological record that are uh, representative of, uh, from Paleo Indian up to uh, the Woodland period. We didn't bring Mississippian stuff since we're at Cokie and they have a lot of Mississippian stuff here. But these are mostly replicas of um, or casts that made that people can handle of you know, pottery, stone tool implements that from the sort of 10, 12,000 years of history in this region. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're streaming? Yep. We're live. Cool. All right. So, uh, introduction, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, hello, world. I am Justin Vilbig. Uh, I am a PhD student at St. Louis University, and my interest is using remote sensing technologies in archaeology. So, what did you bring today? Uh, so right here we have a uh, nice little consumer drone. You can go and buy this if you want. Um, it's called a DJI Mavic, um, and this is uh, a good drone for like kind of a quick survey. Um, but if you really wanted to do like detailed geospatial analysis, you would need something better that you could then swap out the sensor. So instead of having just like a high resolution camera, you would be able to put on like thermal or LiDAR or whatever. Um, but this is a, a fun little drone to get out there and fly and get some cool images with it for sure. So why would you use a drone in archaeology? Why? Well, you know, archaeology is all about, uh, you know, knowing where to dig, right? You got to get into the ground and uh, using drones and using geospatial technologies really gives you an advantage in knowing where to dig. Um, so you can do any number of different types of analysis depending on the site you're working at. Um, and that will give you, you know, a real, real clear picture of where you're going to be most likely to find something that's interesting. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. So many other things. Drones are fun. Drones are fun. Yeah, you don't need to be afraid of them. <laughs> live streaming for Cahokia Archaeological Society. Oh my goodness, I should have passed. <laughs> well, we're just kind of going, going around and showing people what happens here at Cahokia on Archaeology Day. So, what are you guys doing here? We are talking to people about um, archaeology and anthropology at SIU, and then kind of just answering basic questions about what, what is archaeology like in the region. So I think a lot of people are here because they like to look at artifacts and mounds and stuff, but we're talking about archaeological education. Mm -hmm. So we have an archaeology program at SNUE where we uh, offer an anthropology major. If you want to be an archaeologist, if you want to do archaeology while you're in college, come to SNUE. And Carol is teaching a field school to students from other universities as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I do an um, interdisciplinary field school uh, that's uh, funded through the National Science Foundation. And we take 10 students um, every year from throughout the United States as long as they're a U.S. citizen. And it's a program that does archaeology and ecology. So my students come out and they learn how to do archaeology. Uh, and then they also learn how to do ecology research. So they're out on the Mississippi River on boats electrofishing and learning how to do uh, how to conduct a fish monitoring program. Uh, and then with me, they learn zooarchaeology and field archaeology, and then they have to integrate those two data sets together. So. so if somebody was interested in that program, where would they go for information? They would probably contact me or um, our website, although I think our website might be down right now. <laughs> So you'd probably want to email Carol Colanino at C C O L A N I at S I U E dot All right, that's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. We're now going into the interpretive center. We're actually headed back to see uh, Marilyn Kinsella who is who has agreed to dem to tell a story. Tell a story. Here's one of the exhibits. That's in the interpretive center, which replicates. 
I think we actually know the people that are digging down there. One looks a lot like Larry Kinsella. Wi-Fi signal's not that great in this building, so we may lose you, but we'll come back. Now we're going to get into the auditorium where they have zoo archaeology and botany and artifact work. If I can... side of archaeology. <laughs> We're live streaming on Facebook. Say hi. <laughs> Do you want to tell us about our tech watching here? <laughs> this is the artifact washing station at Archaeology Day at Cahokia Mounds. This is Grace and I'm Gail. Hello. <laughs> hi Grace, hi Gail. <laughs> We're um, Grace is emptying a basin so that we can wash some new, a new bag, and I'm working with a really excellent artifact washer. What is your name? Henry. Henry. And Henry is especially interested in, um, well, he's interested in stone tools, and he's interested in uh, pottery. What's in the bag, Henry? Um, so this, this is... This is probably going to be a bone. This is probably a bone. <laughs> so these are real artifacts, mm -hmm. and they're from, are they from Mound 34? Yes. We're at Mound 34 here at Kokia Mound, so kids get to actually wash artifacts that were found on the site. In fact, we can tell from this bag that the, these artifacts were dug up on July the 28th, so that's like a week ago, right? Mm -hmm. Not very long ago. And, what do you got? And this artifact I found, it's, and it looks like they actually could send it over to the arrowhead making station. That's right. They got that when they were making a tool, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Okay. You think, you think you know what kind of stone that's made out of? Um, maybe... Flint or chert. That's right. Did you make a Did you make an arrowhead at the station? Yes. yes. Are you gonna be an archaeologist when you grow up? Well, actually, I'm gonna be a geologist. Well, that makes a lot of sense. You're gonna see a lot of rocks. Mm -hmm. 
Henry, can I tell you about a, a, a possibility that would combine geology and archaeology? They call it geo-archaeology. And you can do actually both, but you have to know twice as much. So it's hard. <laughs> but I think you could do it. Thank you. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, Sophie, are you going to get up here and help? Can you do some artifacts from Mount Hood? Here are some ceramics, and here's some bones, and some lithics. muscle shell and you can tell that it's all kind of degrading so that's why we keep them in vials so it doesn't break down like a monster. Thank you. Uh -huh. What is this Sedona? Uh, it's a shard of pottery. Where'd it come from? Mount 34. What's that white stuff in it? Shell temperature. What do they use that for? Uh, to make the to make it sturdier. <laughs> What's this, Sedona? That's deer tea. Why is it there? Uh, because they found it at Mount 34. Why was it there? Maybe they killed a deer and that's <laughs> And ate it. Yeah. Yeah, and ate yeah, it. There we go. Cooked in one of those pots. <laughs> Let's go meet Cricket Kelly. So this is Cricket Kelly, and she has a station here. Could you tell us a bit about what, what does your Cricket do? Jesus. <laughs> she, yeah, what do I do? <laughs> She's a zoo archaeologist. A what? A zoo archaeologist. What does a zoo archaeologist do? They study animal bones that are found on archaeological sites. Here's her display. Could you tell us a bit about your display here? My display here? Well, this is some of my comparative material that I use in my zooarchaeological work. And we've got pelts, so I tried to get the skulls of the animals that we had pelts for, so the kids can kind of see, you know, make the connection between the two. And they like to feel the pelts, and they like to touch the teeth of the animals. And then I explain we've got, um, this, these are all mammals up here. And then we have some reptiles and birds and fish and amphibians. And this, this is a snake. What are those things? These things, this is a, this was found over in Mound 34 across the road. And this is a deer mandible that has been used. It's all smooth, and we think it might have been used to dig or poke holes in the ground, maybe. We're not really sure what they're used for. And this is a deer ulna that's been made into an awl to poke holes through the... It's very sharp. You can poke holes. Wow. So... And it has a natural handle, so it's very useful. And these are some of the archaeological bones that we get out of, like, Mount 34. So my job is to identify what animals they are. So I use the comparative material to identify what animals we get. Are these tools that are made out of bones? Yes, these are tools that are made out of bone. We've got a bison scapula hole. So... <laughs> It wasn't probably used here at Cahokia, but out west on the plains, because um, bison weren't here. But uh, it was very useful for uh, breaking up the prairie sod. Here at Cahokia, we would use more, or the Mississippians would use the uh, shells for holes. And then they used antlers. This doesn't have its handle, but it could be used as a rake. And then we get various uh, pins and fish hooks. This is a game. So we've got deer toes and a pin. 
and it's very similar to the cup and ball game. So kind of, that have been cool if I could do it for you. <laughs> but anyway, what the point is, you're trying to, to skewer the, so the Indians would drill the hole through the deer toes. And then we've got an antler projectile point and some kind of a weaving tool. So they made all kinds of tools out of the deer bones. What kind of animal is a Pliolodictus ovarius? <laughs> what do you think that is? <laughs> Very kind of preschool. This is the, the, the cranium, and it is a flathead catfish. I would never guess that. <laughs> That's snake or turtle? That's a snapping turtle. turtle. So, so I try to I try to have the scientific names on one side and then the common names on the other side and make the kids guess what they are. And so they can they can test themselves. Kids love this. They love it. I'm going to try my James. Thank you. You're welcome. Now let's go look at the who lived at Cahokia Mounds really depended heavily on corn. They cultivated it and they grew it in large quantities, dried it, and stored it so that during the long cold winters they'd have something to eat. This shows how the original corn was cultivated into bigger and bigger ears until finally it was uh, actually a, a head like we might recognize today. The next area show resources and foods that we get from woodlands, from fields, um, different things that the native people depended on and that we still depend on. Um, we do quite a bit of information about the prairie because the prairies were so important. The prairie plants had deep, deep roots that held the soil in place so that we didn't have the washing and uh, erosion that we do today. The next area is fibers that we get from wetlands and from woodlands. Then we move on to medicinal plants. And these are pictures of the plants themselves and their purpose. And then we have dyes. Some of the fibers that were dyed were even cattail fluff and um, whatever that is. Milkweed. Milkweed, thank you. And these are things that were used for dyes? These were things, these were dyed and these were things that we used to dye. The roots, the, the barks. Here's a list of all the different plants and what colors they created. So red clover would make yellow dye. Yeah, isn't that amazing? That's amazing. It's not what you would expect. So these are all native plants that we show how they have benefited us and continue to benefit us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Cut out the really stupid parts. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look and see what's going on outside. So out here is the lobby of the Interpretive Center, and over there is the theater. We're not really sure how far the signal reaches, but we're going to try to take you a little bit into the museum and see if we can't see Marilyn Kinsella, who's a kind of famous storyteller around here. 
What's your favorite Maryland story, Sedona? My favorite story has to be the Whistling Sonic was. Oh, here's a canoe that they got from the St. Francis River in Arkansas. I think Dr. Mitchum was part of that. Yeah. We know yeah. Dr. Mitchum from the Arkansas Archaeological Association, so we'll give him a shout out. Society, sorry. She always corrects me. Why don't you show him the inside of the canoe? Sure. Inside the canoe, in several places, you can actually see the marks from when they were carving it out. Several good examples of this are right here in these divots. And these are the marks from, from the edges they use to carve out the canoe. And some of that leaching is still coming out. This canoe so so for years and years and chemical. Uh, what was it? Glycol? Yeah. To help preserve it and it's still in the process of drying out. I need to back up. If you've never been to Cahokia Mounds, you should definitely plan a trip. It is one of the most impressive sites in North America, and it's kind of a secret. It's only about 10 to 15 miles from the city of St. Louis. Here's the Right now we can't get to Maryland to tell a story because of Signal, but we're trying to arrange something so that we can get a story to you guys. We're going to walk through and there's a lot of people here right now. And there's a lot of things going on outside too. They just announced the winners of the raffle. Okay, we're gonna announce the second drawing. And now they're drawing for the micro. <laughs> So if you didn't hear that, we're headed outside to see what's going on out here, like Adelaide, Chunky, Flint Nathing, and many other things. If we can't get to everything, we'll record and we'll post later, but I think we can make it to Adelaide. I hope so. We've been there most of the day. <laughs> So Adelaide is one of the most popular events here at Archaeology Day. It's kind of getting late in the afternoon, but when it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, we have a line that goes and goes and goes. We have to have people step back because they get too close to the ropes and we don't want anybody to get impaled. some pottery, there's a bow maker, down there is flint napping, and three rivers, three, river, three rivers archaeological, okay, three rivers archaeological society, right? Yeah, yeah, they're down there. And so is the Powell Archaeological Research Center, which is Dr. Kelly's organization, which purchases property in East St. Louis. And currently they're having a 
raffle for an Adel Adel. If someone wanted to, if you were here, you could enter the raffle, try to win the Adel Adel. Am I too quiet? I'm gonna give you a view around Cahokia Mounds. I'm sorry, as you can tell, this is not scripted. We kind of got suckered into this, but give you a view around the mounds. So behind us is the interpretive center. You can see some of the mounds in the distance. We'll turn around and give you a view of Monk's Mound, which is the most famous mound off in the distance. You can see where they're practicing with atlatls. Dr. Eisminger is down there. Atlatl has been very popular today and earlier I was working there and the line did not stop. It's very fun. It's primitive spear throwing. And it was the predecessor to bow and arrow. And it was a hunting method. So these children currently are trying to... Okay. Uh, these children are aiming at these targets. There's... We're going to have to end the live broadcast and just record everything else since the signal is right, does not reach out far enough. So, 